I've just turned off uh, Interstate 40 onto Highway 59 heading north through Salisaw, Oklahoma. Now we're turning on to Oklahoma 101 to the east or to the right. We're going in search of the gravesite of Charles Arthur Floyd, Pretty Boy Floyd. Now the Floyds moved to this area uh, from Georgia and they were it was somewhere around 1915 and Charlie was uh, eight or nine years old at the time. Now Mr. Floyd, Walter Floyd, was a hard-working industrious type person as all the Floyds were. And uh, he ended up owning a store in Aiken. And uh, the store's not there now. And neither is the post office where uh, Charlie, when he was 17, 18 years old, stole $3.50. Of course, they didn't prosecute him because everybody liked the Floyds and they everybody liked Charlie. And so uh, they, it just sort of died out. But that was his first taste of easy money. Now this is really pretty country through here, but now the graveyard is up here on the right. Now here we are at the Aiken Cemetery, and if you uh, want to try and find Charlie's grave, go straight up this road here till you get to the end of it, and uh, then walk uh, sort of to your right just a little bit, maybe a couple of hundred feet. Now in 1934, when Charlie was buried here, they was estimated to be around 20 to 40,000 people. This is the largest funeral ever held in Oklahoma history. Now, when Charlie was around 20, he married Ruby Hargrave. She was a part Cherokee woman, <clears throat> and she was 16 or 17 years old. And uh, a year or so later, they had Charles Dempsey Floyd. Now, Charlie wanted to name him Jack Dempsey after the boxer, but... Ruby thought that was just a little bit too much. Now, Ruby, after uh, Charlie's death, Ruby married uh, two or three more times, but it didn't stick. And here's uh, Charlie and Ruby. And Ruby died in 1970. <laughs> now, Charlie, here we are at the graveyard trying to find it now. Charlie worked several jobs trying to support his little family, but when the Depression come on, there just wasn't any jobs to be had. So Charlie looked for an easier way. Charlie was born in 1904, and he died, of course, in 1934. Now, Charlie got his name, they say, from a paymaster that the gang had robbed. And uh, the, the man was trying to describe to the law uh, what Charlie looked like. And he said he had a boyish face and so on and so forth. But the newspaper picked it up and called him Pretty Boy. Now, another story is that a prostitute call him that, but I believe, I sort of believe the first story. Now this, very next to uh, Charlie is his mother and daddy, Walter and Minnie. Now, uh, Charlie and, here, here's the, here's, it's not the entire family, but here's six, Walter and Minnie and six of the kids. Now Charlie is the one uh, at the bottom on the right, standing in front of his mother. 
Now, he was the fourth child, and I think there was eight altogether. There's only five here in the picture. Now, Charlie and his mother, about a year before Charlie was killed, they snuck up here to uh, his daddy's grave because his daddy died in 1929. And they talked about what was going to happen to Charlie and where he should be buried and, and this and that. And uh, but they had to they had to sneak and do it, and also, the tale is that Charlie would drive by his mother's house and stop, and she would come out there, and he would hand her a fistful of money, and then take off again. Now that's a that's a kid that a mother could love. People have been coming and chipping stones off of Charlie's grave. And uh, I think this is, I believe this is the third tombstone that the family's had to replace. And, uh, you know, that that gets old, so don't do that. Now this is one of the uh, one of the sons of Walter and Minnie, and you notice it, it it only has one date, so it's an infant son. Now this is an odd thing. This is uh, Charlie's brother here, and he was uh, he was four years younger than Charlie. E. W. is what they call him, and in in 1940s, the end of 1940s, he was uh, elected sheriff of, of this county. And he actually remained sheriff until his death in 1970. And this is his wife, Beulah. So that just shows how well the family was thought of. Can you imagine to elect the brother of the number one criminal in the country, uh, sheriff? Now, uh, these two right here, I know that they are Floyds. I know they're related to the Floyds, but I really don't know, don't know where they fit in at, or uh, you know, or how they come in. I don't know, but this one I do. Now, this is Mary Delta here. This is a sister of uh, Charlie's. Now, Mary Delta was eight years younger than Charlie, but uh, and uh, she married uh, a Carlton. I think they call him Mike. And she died in 1997, and uh, Mike died in 1995. You can see the favoritism on her. Now, on November the 1st in 1932, uh, Charlie had robbed so many banks in uh, Oklahoma that he felt confident that he could rob the bank in his own county in Salisaw. So, standing on this empty lot here on this corner, was the Salisaw State Bank. And so Charlie tells his friends and his family that on November the 1st, at a certain time, he's going to rob the Salisaw Bank. And sure enough, he pulls up at the right time, and a lot of people who are waiting to see the show stand across the street, and they all start clapping when they see him pull up. And he goes in uh, and robs a bank, and then when he comes out and uh, gets in the car to leave, uh, he drives down the street and starts throwing out money. And 
And of course, they don't let it lay there, you know. Now, four days before uh, Charlie's death, on the 18th of October, 1934, Charlie Floyd, Adam Ritchie, and two female companions, and by the way, those female companions come and attended his funeral. Now, this right here is Charlie Ritchie. This is a buddy of, of Floyd's for a long time. And uh, what they did was they left Buffalo, New York. It was foggy. They got into Ohio, and they hit a telephone pole. Well, it put the car out of commission. So they sent the two girls to get a tow truck, and here they are. Sent these two ladies to get a tow truck and have the car fixed. And they took their guns and blankets and went up into the woods to hide. They were supposed to come back and get them and once they got the automobile fixed. But somebody saw them up there and thought it odd that two men in suits was laying in the woods. So they notified the local law. The law comes out. They chase Richie. They capture him. And then, uh, uh, but Floyd gets away. So four days later, he's still on the run. And at this spot in Ohio, uh, right outside of uh, East Liverpool, Ohio, uh, he comes up to a farmhouse, and he's hungry and tired and cold, and he's been on the run. And he knocks on the back door, and uh, uh, Mrs. Conley, Connell, C O. N K L E. Now, now she was a widow woman by herself, and he tells her that he's been uh, he is off hunting with a friend and he got lost. Of course, she knew the difference because he was in a in a suit. And so, but nevertheless, she tells him to come in and she cooks him a meal and feeds him and he pays her a little money, and he says he needs a ride into town. Now this is. This is her right here showing the dishes that he eat off of. Now, she tells him that her brother and his wife is in the fields, but his brother, her brother might take him into town once he gets into th from the fields. Instead of staying in the house with her, like a gentleman, he goes out and sits in the car and waits. The car is behind this corn sh shed here. And when the, the brother gets there and he starts to take him into town, they start to pull out from the corn shed. Well, when they do it, at the same time, law enforcement is passing on the main road. And they back up to sort of hide theirself. Well, the law noticed it, that they had backed up and got suspicious and started pulling out. Well, instead of taking anybody as a hostage, uh, uh, Charlie gets out of the car and runs towards the woods. He gets to this spot in the cornfield before he's shot. He's shot once, gets up, runs a little further, and he's shot again. Now, this is a after picture. This is not a real picture here. I don't think law enforcement would stand in a circle and shoot at one another. But this is the location that it happened. And then Charlie was taken to the... Uh, to the local morgue, and then later on, uh, he was sent down here to Aiken, Oklahoma, where he's buried today.